hello my lovely viewers and welcome to another video of sports on Fauzan Harun channel the channel of choice and Fauzan Harun community members I'm greeting you wherever you are and um, if you are not part of the community please you can do one thing which is free to join the community that is hit the subscribe button and touch the notification bell um, give me thumbs up if you enjoy the presentation and then send in your comment and most importantly share the program for other viewers to also join in and um, share the joy uh, of the community all together and um, today i'm going to review the manchester united chelsea game epic um, epl encounter that was um honored at old trafford um the, uh, by uh, in the empty stadium of old trafford for um uh, viewers uh, uh, had the opportunity to watch the game and um, uh, I'm going to look at some points in the game which are critical for analysis and um, uh, worth considering in terms of discussion and um, this program is about discussing ins, um, inner nature of the game um, uh, some aspect or tactics that um, ordinary you would not see or even possibly you may see but you may not come to terms or understand it this program is there to unlock and um unravel that mystery for you out there and um congratulations to super edward mendy for uh, earning his third clean sheet once again and the man of match accolade in the game against uh, manchester united he pulled off some important saves in the game and um Judging from the selection, the team lineup, Frank Lampard brilliantly um, did some excellent job in terms of the team um, lineup. But later, he exposed his tactical bankruptcy by substituting Timo Werner. Yeah, by substituting, some people were in agreement with that. I'm never in. I'm not in agreement with that at all because um, it's a clear case of um, having your top striker on the field when you are not winning the game. And substituting Timo Werner communicate one thing to us that Lampard went into the game and he didn't want to win the game. And as a club like Chelsea who is chasing the Premiership title, mind you, it's not too late because earlier on, before coming into the studio to do this program, Everton lost 2 0 to Southampton. Um, this kind of Premier League is throwing out some interesting and um, um, surprising results. And so the league is still far from over. So the, the team at the top, 13 points, Chelsea is currently 9 points, is leading Chelsea by 4 points. And so the title race is blown wide open still once again. And still uh, we uh, should have gotten 3 points yes, uh, at uh, Manchester United yesterday. Uh, we should have gotten 3 points on Saturday against Manchester United. There, but Lampard went into the game fear, fearful of losing than uh, winning. He was afraid to lose than to win and more afraid to lose than to uh, win. That was what uh, happened in the game. And um, the reason why I said he brilliantly gave uh, us some lineup and later um, how to expose his tactical bankruptcy and cluelessness. Why am I saying he had Mendy in goal? Let me go back to the line. Mendy in goal. He had Thiago Silva, um, Zuma, Ket Zuma, um, Cesar Aspelicueta, the three back there, and then in midfield, he packed the midfield, Rhys James, Ben Chilwell, N'Golo Kante, and Jorginho. You know, I'm a fan of packing the midfield. Remember, in some and most of my programs, I'm calling for um, uh, this guy, Fikayo Tomori, to join the midfield. It's an aspect of packing the midfield. You know, that was why, um, in some case, I support Antonio Conte's tactical um, build up on the field because I'm in, in favor of packing the midfield. If you think you are conceding more goals, packing the midfield will prevent um, uh, opponents from um, attacking you so much. And couple with the fact that if you have an excellent goalkeeper, that is it. Um, and, and now we, Chelsea, you can confidently say that we have an excellent goal goalkeeper in the shape of um, Edward Mendy. And so we can pack midfield and use the counter attacks well. By yesterday, unfortunately, we couldn't use the counter attacks well. And how can you play a game uh, so the blame still goes at the doorstep of the coach? How would you um, parade um, a talent worth more than um, 900 million pounds sterling? You remember last season, we spent 200 and more than 250 million pounds and yet had only one shot on goal against Manchester United at Old Trafford. Um, that was, wasn't good at all. The setup and lineup was excellent. But later, his substitution 
undid the tactical formation of Chelsea. And later, Manchester United started playing the ball, the game um, more than Chelsea once again. When indeed Lampard lined up and was playing the game better than Manchester United before the last 19 minutes when um, Timo Werner was substituted. Kai Havertz, fine. I supported the substitution, but Timo Werner, no. Because Tammy Abraham came into the field, was a mere passenger in the game. I didn't see much of him, honestly. So that was about that. And I don't know what Olivier Giroud is still doing on the bench, honestly. Uh, he should have come in, not Tammy Abraham. And yesterday also, another interesting aspect is that shameful officiating um, spoiled the game altogether because um, Cesar Aspelicueta was headlocked by Harry Maguire in the penalty box of Manchester United. And the referee even didn't bother to review that decision. And later, the most funny aspect uh, uh, was that um, uh, Marcos Rashford was not touched, was given the faintest of touch was given the faintest of touch, meaning not clear touch, yet the referee had the audacity to go and review that. This is a clear case of trying to help Chelsea. They were hell bent on getting a penalty for Manchester United. I was uh, watching in my studio, I said, this guy, you see, this is the kind of faintest touch, which even my, uh, my grandmother uh, sitting at home in Africa knows that it's not a penalty. But yet the referee was, not, was even shameless was shameless to go and review such a decision that Marcus Rashford was, uh, uh, had a, a little touch from uh, Thiago Silva, which even my grandmother at, uh, in Africa at home knows that it's not a penalty. But yet the referee shamefully reviewed that and ended up deciding not to give a penalty. Even if he had given a penalty, it wouldn't have surprised me because that is how they dash uh, free penalties to Manchester United in the EPL. And come, talking about Manchester United of, um, and penalties is getting too much. And for me, let me uh, be straight out there with you. Let me be clear. Getting penal Manchester United getting penalties in Europe, I don't bother. It's clear. Europe, the officiating is far better than English officiating. So that one, I don't bother. Because Chelsea occasionally also get penalties in Europe. But in England, it is clear case of uh, the referees wanting to dash and give penalties to Manchester United without Manchester United putting in an effort to get the penalty. Even Rashford didn't even um, challenge the referee to review that. And shamefully, the referee had to go and review uh, such a decision that Marcos Rashford was given a slight touch in the penalty box of Chelsea. He nearly awarded a, Chelsea against, uh, a penalty against Chelsea. You see? So it is a clear case of robbery trying to rob Chelsea. And Aspil Equator was headlocked, clearly. Everybody, even Manchester United legend, Patrice Evra, knew that ball was a penalty, but the referee disgracefully had to wave that uh, uh, off and allow play to go on. Come on. How long should, that, should uh, the, the English um, um, uh, game suffer with bad officiating? How long should the English game continue to suffer with bad officiating? Come on, they are disgracing England, said Rafi Atkinson. The, those kind of referees are disgracing England. They are purely doing the job of Manchester United. Normally, I don't want to do it, but I'm the program uh, I'm trying to attack, I don't attack referees. I only do that when I feel that there's an injustice on the field. And um, also, um, you saw the game there, um, Reese James, excellent. Reese James had an excellent and fantastic day. The, uh, Silver, Thiago Silva also a fantastic day. Thiago, um, Edward Mendy was the man of the match, of course. And then the only, um, today in this game, I think most of the players, these three players, Mendy, um, Silva, uh, Ch uh, James had uh, positives. And then average ratings are Chilwell, Zuma, um, Kante, Pulisic, Harvest, Timo Werner. And then I think Jorginho, I will give him positive uh, um, average rating. In this game, nobody got negative because obviously we didn't lose, fine. But, but Jorginho still, I, I would have uh, pe preferred um, Kovacic to play that position, honestly. I would have preferred Kovacic to play that position. And Lampard, uh, when Lampard substituted Timo Werner, the game um, went into the hands of Manchester United. They were coming forward to attack. During the time that Timo Werner was on the field, Manchester United were defending. Because, mind you, even a half fit Timo Werner is far better than Tammy Abraham. Honestly, and because some people, some um, these Chelsea vloggers, some of my friends out there doing the vlogging business for Chelsea are trying to do the poor English sentiment. No, 
the English players that deserve to be in the first 11 are Ben Chilwell and then um, Rhys James. And they justified it yesterday. And even to some extent, Messi Mount sometimes does well. But yesterday, he was on and off, though a little bit uh, better. He came in the day, I give him a read. But Tammy Abraham, I will give him negative. He came second half, but he was a mere passenger in the game. Tammy Abraham, I like him, but honestly, he didn't bring anything into the game. Uh, Timo Werner should have been left onto the field when that would scare Manchester into coming forward to attack. But Lampard exposed his tactical bankruptcy by substituting Timo Werner, hence allowing Manchester to play the game. You remember, it was those last few 15 to um, uh, 20, uh, 19 minutes that Manchester United had chances. Marcus Rashford has chances for Edward Mendy to be saving. That was as a result of uh, tactical bankruptcy. Lampard changed Timo Werner and all of a sudden Manchester United players were pouncing forward to go and score. The time that Timo Werner was on the field, they were scared to go forward. So you should have left him on the field. I remember you only change, you only change your best striker whenever you are leading comfortably. Remember in those times that Didier Drogba was playing for Chelsea, when Chelsea needs results, Didier Drogba stays on the field. No, at no point in time has Didier Drogba ever been substituted whenever Chelsea wants the three points. And that substitution of Timo Werner um, told, clearly tells us that Lampard was, interested, was not interested in winning. So this is the kind of things that Lampard does and uh, some people will be calling for him to be sacked. Shouldn't be continue, he shouldn't continue doing that. The league is still wide open. This is the time for him to be getting the points for us. This is the time for him to be getting the points for us. We don't want any mediocre um, substitution. And uh, another thing for Lampard is that sometimes he waits too long to make a substitution. He waits too long. By yesterday, I think it was a little bit better, though the substitution of uh, coming in of Abraham didn't bring add much anything, didn't add much to our game. It's rather um, we progress our game by allowing Manchester to pounce forward. So that was one of those saves. Let's go to the screen of one of those saves for Edward Mendy there. Yeah, that's mainly the king of the match they yesterday had a fantastic day and this is the clear headlock that i was talking about look at how um, harry maguire held um cesar Aspilicueta. but the referee shamefully didn't um review this um, decision he didn't do it this is the kind of things these are the kind of things that the english referees do and we try to um say that they are the most rubbish in terms of officiating in europe they are rubbish in terms of European officiating. They are disgracing the English game. The fact the English game, the fact that you they love Manchester United, uh, doesn't mean that they should be giving them any decision at all, if, if even they don't deserve. Come on, he, he, you could see that he was clearly searching for penalty for Manchester United, which is quite unfortunate. And yet Chelsea had clear, the clearest of all penalties, and it was it wasn't reviewed at all. And um, when uh, I think uh, the Stuart at all that. Uh, um, VAR, that clueless VAR official also. Uh, he, when I think somebody drew his attention and said they reviewed the decision and thought the referee said nothing was wrong with that. How come? So shocking that you had to, if, I bet you if it were Manchester United, if this happened in the box of, um, in the box of Chelsea, the referee uh, would have whistled for a penalty for Manchester United. I bet you, read my lips, he would have given Manchester United penalty. Please, if this happens to be your first time of joining me on the show, please do well to hit the subscribe button and touch the notification bell. Um, give me more likes, thumbs up if you enjoy the show. And then let me know, do let me know in the comment box what you feel about the program. Most importantly, share the program for um, other members to also join the Fauzan Haroon community. So quite um, shocking, the decisions of this kind of referees in the English game. It is dragging English... Um, the name of the English game to the mat. It's, it's disgracing the English game. It's disgracing the English game. So Lampard should be aiming at should aim at winning always. We don't want draws. The draws are too much. Lampard has played about seven or eight matches. He's won only two and drawn drew about five or six. Lost one to Liverpool. The draws are the draws are getting too much. We want wins. We don't want draws. We want to win the league. We don't want. Uh, to, to be competing for top four. Because if your ambition is to compete for top four, then you are not 
you don't deserve to go Chelsea. Honestly, that's what I have to tell my legend, Frank Lampard. He's my legend, but I have to be hard on him. He set out excellently, leave Timo, Timo Werner on the pitch. And add Messi Mount, I agree, he should have uh, changed the substitution of Harvest for Messi Mount. Perfectly, I agree. But leave Timo, uh, 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 Timo Werner on the field. He was the only player that was pressing. Then when Tammy, uh, Tammy Abraham came on the field, he did no disrespect to him. Manchester United left him and went to attack because they knew he, he wouldn't threaten them. That's why they left him and went to be attacking. If it were to be Timo Werner, he would have scored them. So next time, Lampard should watch that out. Thank you very much for watching the show. Um, as always, as always, do well to join the community by subscribing to the channel. The red subscribe button, hit it for me. Thank you very much, as always, for joining me on the show. Um, let me see whether something is left. Yeah, and in terms of the statistics, you look at before the substitution of um, Timo Werner, Manchester United were fouling Chelsea. They had yellow, two yellow cards before then. And then when um, Tammy Abraham came, they had one yellow card. So Chelsea, the possession um, changed when Timo Werner was substituted in favor of Manchester United, hence ending the game 50%, 50% for, uh, ball possession. Chelsea would have held onto the game and controlled the game as we want, which may have could have resulted in us getting a goal. But Lampard tactically destroyed his brilliance, a brilliant lineup that he's put out earlier on. Thank you very much for joining me on the show. Hope to meet you in my subsequent videos. Videos, Cheers and thank you for joining me always. Um, God bless you. Bye-bye. Um,